What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Planet Zoo. Once again, if you guys are enjoying the Africa Pack mini-series, make sure you drop a like on the video. It'd be greatly appreciated. In the last episode, I kind of hinted at uh, the fact that we were going to be turning this structure, this stilted structure out here into our African Penguin Aquarium. Now, if you guys watched the previous series that I did on Planet Zoo, you may remember that we started to build a aquarium for our penguins, among other things, and then construction just kind of stopped. And uh, that was mainly because I ran out of steam. But uh, we're back, dude. We're back. Not steam like the gaming service steam. Like I was tired <laughs> and didn't want to put any more effort into that zoo in particular. So here we are in our new zoo where, again, we have tasked ourselves with building an aquarium. And we're already off to a fantastic start. You can see this whole structure here that uh, we'll kind of go into more detail about later on. And if you're wondering what this structure here is for, it's honestly just for spacing. So the way this whole thing works is first I decided to make this small little structure and then I would design paths around said structure. So if we were to take this little square arch building right here and duplicate that, you'll notice that no matter where I put it down, if it's on the corner, if it's if it's inside, if it's anywhere, it's snapping to it like it's like it's in a grid basically. So literally the only reason that this structure even exists is just so I can get perfect spacing on both the upstairs path as well as the downstairs path. And then what that also allowed me to do is figure out how far I could go to where I needed to, you know, place down other building structures, much like the, the restrooms over here. These also just snapped into the grid so I know if I do build that far, it's not a huge deal because everything just aligns perfectly every time and i love that i gotta say if you're having troubles building good looking interior structures i'd highly recommend trying to use this method because it is very very effective now with that out of the way i think it's important that we talk about where we're gonna get our stylistic influence for this building and honestly i think i'm gonna take most if not all of that influence from this structure here this is a blueprint food station you could call it that has been added with this new pack and i really really like the look of it i like the color contrast between the the light blue and the dark blue as well as against the white i just think it works really really well it's simple but there's also a lot of really decorative pieces to it that just sort of bring this thing to life so we're going to try to not mirror it but match it as best we can, basically just applying that architectural sort of style to a new building. The part that makes this a little bit more difficult is I thought it'd be a good idea to change from just basically a square building to adding in this diagonal bit over here with this staircase. I have absolutely no idea how I'm going to build a structure around this when you guys saw the grid for this thing is very, very square. So if I were to grab, we'll just grab the restroom block, for example. If I were to grab one of these, I can't just rotate this thing at a 45 degree angle and, and make it work with this staircase. It's just, it's not gonna work that way. So I'm gonna have to get uh, a little creative in, in trying to figure out how to do this, but I think I'm up for the task. I said that the last time we were gonna build an aquarium and I just bailed super hard. I, I was out of there. Okay, here we go. So, oh, that's not gonna work at all how I thought it was. I was kind of hoping that we could put this blueprint, like combine the blueprint and this structure, but that's not working. So since we are restricted to this sort of working grid, we're not able to just simply grab this building and, and place it down in this grid. It doesn't work that way. So we have to take bits and pieces of that building whatever we want from it and uh, and manually move them over and add them into this blueprint so it is going to be a little bit difficult but i think we can manage just fine so i'm going to quickly start by just grabbing flat walls maybe a, a couple arches nothing too crazy but i'm going to get a base perimeter figured out of of how we want this building to look okay so after placing just a basic four meter wall perimeter around this thing we're, we're starting to get a little bit better of an understanding of how this is all going to come together so in this area you can probably tell this is going to be 
the actual exhibit. This is where the penguins will will inhabit and live out the rest of their lives, which is really sad, man. But you know what? That's how that's how zoos work. This area back here again is strictly just for staff members. So I had the idea of potentially placing doors, sort of a staff only door, if you will, just in front of the staff path, both here and at the other end of the facility. Another thing that I have to make sure we do is is just try to make the interior look as good as possible. It doesn't take very long to build a structure around something, especially when you're doing it in this this grid like we're doing now. Forgetting a lot of the detail stuff is is a huge, huge mistake on something like this because you don't want the inside to appear at all boring or, or dull looking. So like in this little commons area here, sort of the entrance into this aquarium, these walls, especially just being fairly straight, untextured white walls, it's gonna be really, really boring. So we're gonna have to come up with some sort of decoration. This will be an entirely separate video on its own, but we're gonna have to come up with some sort of decoration scheme on the inside here so that the guests have something else to look at apart from just the exhibit itself. But this is cool, man. It's it's really taken shape. And then this little uh this little plot of land over here, I think I might actually just either do another habitat entrance gate here or we'll just keep this little peninsula up here building like the interior of this exhibit where the penguins are actually going to live might actually be its own separate video as well. Just to sort of talk through my, my thinking process here is I would love to have a habitat entrance gate up here for the keepers to come into the habitat. The only problem is since they're penguins, we're going to have a land level and then we're going to have to have a water level. Part of me wants to just keep the water level like underneath the path but I'm remembering in our previous aquarium thing that we attempted to do, that didn't really go over so well. So we might actually need to have water level be like at the middle of this wall section maybe. It's going to be kind of tough. And then not to mention if we want to have another habitat uh, gate right here at the at the bottom level, this would essentially be the water level or I guess the, the sea floor level. This area back here would all have to sort of be a cliffside. Almost. We, we'd have to have like a staircase, a really, really short staircase from going from this wall to like this wall. Is this making any sense? <laughs> Probably not. But um, I'm trying to I'm trying to talk through things, you know, let you guys know what's going on in my head while we're doing stuff like this. So hopefully you guys appreciate me at least trying. So with this rough shape done, I think we're going to hold off on moving up to the second story. I'm going to go around and uh, add doors and add spots for, for windows like in places like this, then we'll think about doing a second story. I am now remembering why I abandoned ship so quickly on our previous attempt at making an indoor aquarium because it does kind of suck. It, it really does, especially when you're in this situation like we are now where we're just trying to come up with how we're going to stylize the building. The, the structure itself is like ready to go. Now we just have to go through and, and try to figure out, you know, what color scheme we're gonna go with, uh, what sort of architectural pieces do we want to, you know, take from say this building over here and, and apply in a different way to this one. My thought process of course is it's a much larger building than the food court building. So I do think it needs to be taller. I didn't really care for these pillars much. They're actually Indian pillars, except for the, the top side. The top side is from the new stuff. But I thought maybe just a nice splash of color just on the columns and, and other decorative bits might be a good call. So we're going with this for right now. We may end up changing how it's actually configured or how it's tiered here because each one of these is is a different thing. So we can change that around if we, if we really, really need to. This right here is how I want to go about styling the smaller entrances. And actually, I think this is our only other secondary entrance at the moment. We may need to add another one over here, but I actually quite like the look of this. And uh, staff members will just sort of clip through the door. We're going to have to pretend that the doors actually open. Otherwise, if we wanted to also pretend that it has a hinge, we could rotate it. But what I had to do with the doors is kind of annoying. Since it is just a one-sided door, you can have the handle on this side. I had to duplicate the door and flip it around 180 degrees so that we would have the same door texture then on the inside 
as well. In addition to all the, the decorative stuff that we've had to place down, I do still want to light the interior as best as possible as well. So starting off here on this sub interior, I guess, we have these two decorative lamps here and these two fountains. And then I've been doing quite a bit of reconsidering on my idea of having another habitat gate down here on, on this level, kind of make it almost a greenhouse. But we're basically just gonna fill this with plants and, uh, and liven up the space that way a little bit. And then our only habitat keeper gate will actually be up here. That way we don't have to have this weird pit in this back corner where you have floor access and then higher access even still. This just makes the most sense to me. Holy cow, dude. Um, as you guys can probably tell, it's, uh, it's, it's much, much later now in the recording. And uh, I gotta say, I have way, way more appreciation uh, for people that do mosaics on a daily basis because this is horrible. Uh, it takes so, so dang long to place down each individual tile and I can only imagine if you had to do each individual piece by hand on a day-to-day -day basis. Mad respect, all you mosaic tilers out there. But I now have a very rough draft for something we can basically just copy and paste wherever we need it now. So we have some monstrous pillars. We have a nice archway in the center that does kind of get weird. It gets a little clippy when you get far away, but as soon as I scroll in, boom, it's just back all of a sudden. So now that we've basically completed this mosaic, you might notice that the center of this isn't perfectly aligned with the center of the archway. And that's just because of how the building's constructed. We can, you know, maneuver this and, and space it out however we need to. That's not a huge deal. Since we have these new pillars over here, I might just do that. Now that we have the mosaic selected, I'm going to grab any old wall. I think this one right here will do. And we're going to duplicate this whole selection just off into no man's land out here. That way, if and when we do actually need this again, we can quickly come over here, copy and paste it, and drag it on wherever else we need it. Okay, I ended up having to sort of adjust this slightly. I had to make a much larger one because the one we were working on actually does get cut off significantly by this other pillar here. And I was looking at this other building again, and uh, they use what they call the Indian fascia doodad thingamabob. I don't really dig that. Just doesn't really match the northern African theme that we have. So instead, I've used a gold plate to sort of mark the center of this mosaic. And I think that actually looks pretty dang nice. So now with that done, I'm half tempted to delete this and uh, sort of try again with our, our new creation, our new mosaic that we have. Okay, so now with that deleted, we can select this one and duplicate it because there's already a wall behind it. So now it'll just snap to our existing grid and we will move that right over here. Now that we've placed it, we can go around to the backside and actually delete that additional wall. And there we go, dude. We have a perfect mosaic completely centered on this archway. And now we have to find something similar to this that'll just sort of mask the, the very top side of our mosaic. Oh, hey, hi, welcome back. Kind of forgot I was recording, honestly, but uh, we're still here um, about three hours into the recording now. And I finally have the shell, the, the perimeter of the building complete. And honestly, this is one of the most highly decorated buildings I think that we've ever made in both Planet Zoo and Planet Coaster. I feel like I've said that before, maybe talking about Planet Coaster, but believe me when I tell you that uh, this thing is very ornate. God, this is just the worst. I absolutely cannot stand it when this happens, and it especially sucks because right after I finished recording this video, I immediately hopped into my summer car and I thought I recorded a video of that. Well, technically I did, but the audio was just as bad, if not worse, in that one. So, you know what? Why don't I try to just dub over myself exactly what I said before? Just don't pay any attention whatsoever to my lips. They will absolutely not match perfectly what I'm saying, but we're gonna try it anyways. 
And along this side, there's nothing really over here, not yet anyways. I do still think we have to come through it and really decorate it, make it look nice. I'm getting bad notifications, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit pause again. This was actually one of the more difficult parts of this building for me because I wanted to sort of break it up as best as I could, you know, having a well-decorated area over here. And what I found that worked really well is adding in just this tiny little plaster bit just at like the top third and like the bottom third. So it does still have some dimension to it and it's not as boring as it probably would have been otherwise. And we carried that all the way over to this little outlet here. This is actually where our keepers and our mechanics and it, basically all of our staff is going to want to come back here just because of the massive staff resting facility that we have just behind this door. And then moving around the corner here some more, this is where it got really weird for me because I found it really difficult to take it from a two by two wall section area thing to then maybe a three by two. What made the most sense to me was adding just this little one by one section that we have here in the front over to the side that way we could sort of break up a two by two with a one by one in the middle and see this is the part where i just sort of ramble on and on and on about nothing like it's it's not important information but i was trying it anyways i then go on to explain that uh i haven't been doing a lot of talking during this episode still at this point not really realizing that my audio has taken a dump which brings us to our beloved outro so once again if you guys did enjoy please leave a like leave a comment help support the dream by smashing that subscribe button and i will see you in the next one thanks so much for watching guys peace